Uh, thanks, thanks, Marina. It's a pleasure and an honor to me, uh, for me to be here and to talk about uh, uh, my work that I'm doing at Columbia University under the um, uh, supervision of Fiona Deutsch. Uh, and it's about prospective identification and purification of quiescent adult neurons themselves from their in vivo niche. So in the adult body, uh, some tissue uh, continuously, continuously regenerate themselves uh, like uh, blood or skin, uh, some of the tissue, like liver, uh, regenerate only after injury. And these uh, um, properties are achieved by st st the adults themselves that are partially undifferentiated cells that are resident in uh, the tissue, and they have capability to self-renew themselves and to differentiate into um, cells uh, of, uh, of the tissue. But what about uh, the adult brain? In the adult brain, there are two um, uh, germinal uh, areas. Uh, one is the subgranular zone of the hippocampus. The other is the uh, ventricular zone. That is uh, um, an area where uh, neuroblasts are generated uh, every day. And the neuroblasts migrate um, in the, among, along the rostral migratory stream uh, into the olfactory bulb and then they differentiate uh, into uh, olfactory bulb interneurons. If you look at the brain, uh, the lateral ventricle, um, it's, uh, so this is the location of the lateral ventricle, and we, if we open the brain and we look at the, wall, the lateral wall of the, the ventricle, we will see chain of uh, uh, migrating neuroblasts there. Which are the cell types in the SVZ? So uh, there are uh, different cell types. We have a uh, large uh, multiciliated ependymal cell that with the motile cilia can help the flow of the cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, there are um, uh, cells that are GFAP, that are GFAP expressing cells, so they have feature of astrocytes. They contact the ventricle uh, and they express a primary cilium in the apical, uh, pro on the apical process. Then there are uh, these green cells that are uh, so-called C-cell or transit amplifying cells that are EGF receptor positive uh, cells that are rapidly dividing as well as uh, uh, chains of neuroblast in red. But how these cell types uh, integrate themselves in the, in the lineage? So to answer this question, Fiona Deutsch in 1999 developed uh, this uh, technique by infusing RSC, that is an anti-mitotic drug that kills all dividing cells, infusing with an osmotic pump on the surface of the brain, and after six days, all the chain of migrating neuroblasts were completed, uh, were gone, so were completely killed by this treatment. But then when you release or withdraw the chemical from from the surface of the, the brain, after a few days, a new uh, neuroblasts are generated, meaning that uh, some cells that are resident in this area are actually have stem cell properties. So now we know that uh, uh, actually astrocytes are stem cell in the niche, and astrocytes give rise to EGF receptor positive and transit amplifying cells, and in turn, they give rise to uh, neuroblasts. Moreover, Erika Pastrana, former postdoc in the lab, uh, a few years ago found that EGF receptor, uh, EGF receptor were also, uh, was also expressed by a subset of astrocytes. And uh, by infusing RSC, uh, she uh, found that uh, uh, EGF receptor positive, GFIP positive cells, so astrocytes, were depleted after RSC treatment, meaning they are active dividing. And uh, this um, and this population were, um, let's say, rise again after 12 hours after the withdrawal of the chemical. So meaning that uh, if this is the lineage, now we know that actually this population is composed at least by two subsets. One is more quiescent and the other is a so-called activator or dividing stem cell. Um, if, we, if we look at the lateral wall, the ventricle, we will see that uh, the, uh, the structure of the wall uh, 
uh, and we will see uh, this structure that's uh, so-called like rosette or pinwheel-like structure where large ependymal cells that are multiciliated um, cluster around a center and the center uh, there are GFAP positive cells that contact the ventricle at the center of these pinwheels. So when we did that and we stain for EGF receptor, we will see uh, that um, we saw that uh, EGF receptor positive as well as some EGF receptor negative GFIP positive cell were contacting the ventricle at the center of this uh, pinwheel. So uh, we have a couple of markers. Up to date, we had a couple of markers to uh, help us to identify a subset of uh, stem cell astrocyte, the activated one, but we didn't have uh, anything to uh, prospectively identify and purify the quiescent uh, stem cell uh, population and distinguish them uh, with uh, the resident mature astrocyte that are also present in, uh, um, the, in the niche. So to try to uh, prospectively identify uh, the quiescent subset, we uh, used, uh, we focused on our attention of CD133, also known as prominin, that uh, uh, it's a pentaspan glycoprotein that's expressed on microvilli and primary cilia, and it's uh, also um, uh, found to be expressed in a neural stem cell during development. So when we uh, look at uh, the whole mount uh, taken from a, a GFAP, GFP transgenic mouse, so that has GFP positive cell under the promoter of GFAP, we found that CD133 was highly expressed on the cilia of ependymal cells, but also expressed by GFA, some GFAP positive cell. Um, and some of the GFAP positive cells were also expressed in EGF receptor. Um, so meaning that uh, uh, there are at least two population of uh, um, CD133 positive um, stem cell that contact the ventricle, some of them express EGF receptor and some of them do not express it. But um, the, uh, the localization of uh, uh, CD133, it's uh, only on the apical part of the cell. So uh, to have an idea, uh, to look at the morphology of the cell, we um, use that uh, a construct, we electroporate in vivo a construct in the lateral ventricle uh, with, a cherry, um, with a cherry reporter uh, protein under the promoter of uh, uh, CD133. And when we did that, we found two uh, cell types in terms of uh, morphology. Some large ependymal cell were labeled that also expressed in CD133, as well as um, long radial um, uh, cells that have feature of astrocytes. Uh, these are confocal uh, images, these are projection, and these are the superficial uh, optical slides. And these um, and the cells were contacting the, the, um, the ventricle at the center of pinwheels as expected. Um, <clears throat> When we uh, use the MCN, uh, the mark, the proliferation marker MCN2, that is a, a nuclear marker that is expressed in uh, uh, actively dividing cells, we found that both MCN2 negative and MCN2 positive um, um, cells were both contacted in the ventricle at the center of pinwheels, as well were in contact with the basal process, uh, with the vasculature. So based on this, uh, um, um, these findings, we um, uh, develop a strategy to uh, identify uh, several, um, cells with a combination of marker, cells uh, uh, with a flux technique, uh, to purify cells at different stage of the lineages. So to purify GFAP and GFP were used uh, to identify astrocytes um, CD133 to identify a stem cell um, and EGF receptor to uh, distinguish between quiescent and deactivated subset. So based on the 
uh, experiment I'll show you later, we uh, were successfully um, identify and purify with this technique the quiescent and deactivated subset of, uh, uh, of a stem cell. These are fox plots showing how we gated uh, the GFP positive population. There were C24 negative. C24 is a marker of neuroblast, and we used the C24 depletion to uh, um, avoid neuroblast contamination on this uh, population. And from this population, we distinguish, we, um, uh, we plot uh, for CD133 and EGF uh, receptor expression. By doing that, we identified two populations. One was GFAP, GFP positive, CD133 positive, and the other was GFAP, GFP positive, CD133, and EGF receptor. So we first look at the uh, cell cycle properties of these uh, cells, and uh, uh, the activated neurostem cell population were enriched in MCN2 and Chi67, Chi67 that are both proliferation markers where uh, the quiescent neurostem cell were, um, were lacking this uh, um, proliferation marker. Uh, when uh, uh, one shot of BRDU, after one shot of BRDU to assess how many cells in a given moment were dividing, we found that more than 30% of uh, activated neurostem cells were actually dividing and uptake uh, BRDU after one hour, while basically none of the quiescent. But when we uh, extend the uh, pulse of BRDU uh, by um, including BRDU in, uh, in the drinking water, we found that almost all the activated neurostem cell population were positive for BRDU, but also few of uh, the quiescent neurostem cell, meaning that this population are uh, indeed um, dividing by with a much slower rate. We then look at the, the um, labor retaining cell assay, uh, that if you, after the uh, pulse of BRDU, uh, BRDU is um, withdrawn, and we look at the, um, how rapidly the, uh, rapidly the uh, cells dilute the label. Because if a, uh, cells is, um, if a cell is um, incorporated BRDU, the BRDU and the cell divide, the BRDU is diluted to the progeny. So an actively, uh, a rapid dividing population would dilute the um, uh, label very uh, fast, while a uh, slowly dividing cells population will divide them slower. And they are called LRCs, or labor retaining cells. And when we did that, um, the activated neurostem cell divide, uh, divide rapidly and dilute the label quickly, while the quiescent neurostem cell um, retain the label after uh, one month after the withdrawal of BRDU. We then check the behavior of our population in a um, regeneration model. And uh, the activated neurostem cell after six days of RSC infusion were gone while quiescent neurostem cell largely survive the, um, uh, the, uh, the RRC treatment. But after three days, this population uh, went back to uh, original, uh, the original um, quantity. So re they replenished, they became regenerated. So up to far, I show you that we uh, were able to, by uh, identification of a combination of marker, we were able to uh, distinguish between these two population that um, and quiescent neurostem cell uh, lack proliferation marker while activated neurostem cell are enriched in proliferation marker and quiescent neurostem cell are LRC um, uh, cells and they survive RSC. So uh, after I have assessed their, uh, their cell cycle properties, we um, look at the uh, in vivo potential of these cells. So we purify cells uh, from a mouse and we transplanted, uh, uh, activated and quiescent neurostem cell in donor wild type mice. And we check after six days and 30 days after the transplant. <coughs> when we look at six days, uh, activated neurostem cell were able to give rise to uh, migrating neuron blast in the uh, SBZ region as well as migrating neuroblast in the RMS and uh, migrating neuroblast in the core of the olfactory bulb. While quiescent neurostem cell, uh, non, uh, where neuroblasts were not detected, 
and cells were only um, detected in the uh, SVC area in the site of injection. But when we look at 30 days, both populations were able to give rise to um, mature interneurons uh, in the olfactory bulb that integrate in the circuitry, as well as uh, both populations were still neurogenic, giving rise to a neuroblast, migrating neuroblast, and cells were still found resident in the uh, SVZ. So after assessing uh, their uh, in vivo properties, we also test the in vitro stem cell potential by uh, some um, um, in vitro uh, assay. One of the most used in vitro assays is the neurosphere assay in which uh, we uh, isolate cells from the uh, SVZ. We dissociate the cells in single cell and the cells are uh, plated in vitro in floating condition uh, with EGF. If you do that, um, cells that can uh, they have stem cell capabilities, they um, grow and they uh, form uh, uh, spheres of uh, uh, cells called neurosphere. And we can then uh, we dissociate the spheres and repassage them to assess self-renewal of the cells as well to play them in a, different, in a different condition, differentiating condition, and to check in if they uh, can give rise to cells of the lineage. Uh, if instead of plating in floating condition, we plate in a different uh, uh, condition, it's a in, that's a called a different colony assay that helps to um, um, uh, assess the clonogenity of this population. When we uh, plate in single cell in a different condition, uh, these two population, uh, activated neural stem cell were able, uh, more than 50% of the cells were able to give rise to colonies. Uh, only 1% of quiescent neural stem cell were able to do that. And this was quite surprising because uh, traditionally um, these assays are thought to uh, assess the stem cell capabilities of all the stem cell comprising the, including the uh, quiescent neural stem cell. But, um, so a few colonies were uh, raised by this population, but when uh, one single cell were activated, the single cell can give rise to large colonies that could, uh, they were multipotent, and so they can give rise to all the cells of the lineage, like GFAP positive mature astrocytes, uh, beta-3 tubulin uh, positive uh, neurons, as well as uh, O4 positive oligodendrocyte. Uh, we test that in a neurosphere uh, and uh, similar uh, results being with uh, the activated neuron stem cell being more um, enriched in a neurosphere formation compared to quiescent neuron stem cell. Another feature uh, that we noticed when we um, played in uh, as a neurosphere is that uh, activated neural stem cell were uh, dividing more rapidly than compared to the quiescent population that show somehow a delay of uh, growth. And when we quantify, we did indeed see that there is uh, some sort of shift in the, in the growth of this population. And uh, um, suggesting that maybe there is some step that quiescent neural stem cell has to overcome and to achieve in order to start to divide. We then uh, passage uh, neurosphere that were derived from quiescent neural stem cell. And when we uh, look at the neurosphere and we uh, stain for the same marker where we used uh, for the primary screen, uh, we uh, found that uh, almost all the cells of the neurosphere were actually activated in neural stem cell. Similar experiment when we um, um, resort uh, uh, activated neural stem cell derived uh, neurosphere, most, um, the majority of the cell were activated neural stem cell, but uh, at the same time, some cell also um, uh, downregulate EGF receptor. And when, when we test the potential of in a give a neurosphere formation in of these two subsets, they kind of resemble the primary um, the primary uh, behavior, uh, meaning that um, from the, the quiescent neural stem cell can give rise to activated neural stem cell, but also activated neural stem cell can revert back to a more quiescent state. 
uh, indicating that these cells can interconvert at least in vitro. So recapping this part, uh, we have two populations that are both neurogenic in vivo and that are both multipotent in vivo. They both give rise to neurosphere, even though uh, um, quiescent only rarely give rise to neurosphere. And uh, they do that with a, um, with a slower kinetic compared to uh, the activated uh, population. Moreover, the two populations can uh, interconvert. So now that we assessed the cell cycle properties and the, the uh, neurogenic potential of these cells, we start to ask other questions. How these cells relate to uh, other known markers uh, that, that are known to be uh, important in neurogenesis, or what they are, the molecular pathways that are uh, involved in uh, active in these two populations. We then, to gain insight to the uh, molecular properties and the pathways that are um, active in these cells, we uh, did microarray analysis on these cells, and we found that actually many genes were differentially uh, regulated in the two populations. Particular uh, quiescent neuron stem cells were enriched in cell adhesion and extracellular matrix um, components, indicating somehow that these cells are well integrated in the niche and they communicate with uh, the microenvironment. And um, uh, at the same time, activated immune system cells were enriched in proliferation and proteasome activity. activity. There are actually uh, um, uh, properties uh, of dividing cells. Moreover, it was interesting to find that there is a switch in the genes that are enriched in metabolism from a lipid very enriched in lipid metabolism, these cells were, these cells were enriched in DNA RNA metabolism. We then compare um, our, um, our uh, sign molecular signature with uh, molecular signature that were published in other uh, contests uh, with uh, long-term acquiescent uh, uh, muscle stem cell as well as skin or intestinal or hematopoietic stem cell. And we found that many genes that were present in their, um, in their quiescent uh, uh, signature were enriched in our quiescent population, as well as genes enriched in, uh, present in their proliferative or short-term signature were enriched in our uh, activated neuron stem cell, indicating that um, maybe some common uh, molecular pathways are uh, shared and conserved between stem cell lineages in different organs. Then to uh, gain insight into um, the uh, activating uh, path, well, in pathways, molecular pathways that are important to uh, activate quiescence themselves or keep the quiescent, the, the quiescence themselves more quiescent, we look at their signaling, and the signaling that are enriched in quiescent neuron stem cell were enriched in G protein coupled receptor signaling. So we uh, identify uh, all the um, we identify ligands that could uh, uh, um, act on uh, the, the GPCR that were enriched in quiescent neuron stem cell, and we test uh, these ligands. So we test 24 ligands and their control, and we look how if these ligands can uh, unbalance the activated states of uh, the quiescent neuron stem cell. And we found that actually three compounds had an effect, uh, prostaglandin D2, sphingosin 1 phosphate, and wind 5A. They were all uh, able to keep a, a subset of, of uh, the quiescent neuron stem cell uh, quiescent. So, also indicating um, that uh, at least part of these uh, um, of the states of the cells uh, of the quiescent state is actually actively maintained. Uh, it's a, there are emerging literature that actually uh, so far people thought that uh, cells uh, quiescent stem cells are dormant stem cells that need to wake up uh, by some signal, but um, Actually, now there are 
there are in the field, we are thinking that actually the quiescent state is actually uh, actively maintained quiescent. And if there is some signal that uh, um, continuously, let's say, um, signal to keep the cells quiescent. And at the end, I want to thank uh, all the uh, collaborators of, uh, for this work, Erika that uh, started to develop the fax technique, Hanga that helped me with uh, uh, the um, immunostaining and the whole mount, and Nina that did uh, the uh, microarray analysis, Alex that did the GPCR screen, Violetta that helped me a lot uh, with all the stem cell, uh, in vitro stem cell, um, assays and in the end Fiona Dodge that gave me the possibility to do the, this work, all the sponsor and thank you all for uh, being here and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.